bit of context uh, about my familiarity with your uh, the film that you worked on, Blade. Yeah. When it when it came out, I mean, I think it was probably the first superhero movie. Uh, it, was. it was. Before, yeah. It was. Uh, I I probably I didn't see it because I've never been a superhero fan. Like I've never read comics growing up. Yeah. But I saw it in 2010, and I absolutely loved it because nowadays, I mean, with the superhero movies, it is so spread out in terms of plot and so much stuff going on. That movie was so focused, and the characters and the story and the concept, the cinematography, everything, mm-hmm. even, even the visual effects, you know, yeah. even for today's times, they were incredible. Um, yeah, they were, so... they, they, you know why? Because they were um, thought out well. They were they belong to that world, and uh, it's not a visual effect to show off the visual effects. It's a visual effect that is uh, helping the story. And wait, I want to. Oh yeah, no, it's good to help the story. And and uh, the story was very grounded. But that's what yeah. was, uh, what was our most uh, important uh, uh, our most important um, goal was to uh, to 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 make it to create a world that was uh, believable. Although uh, in a superhero world, it was still believable with all the with all the things uh, uh, that are going on. Um, okay, um, where do you want, uh, and you let, let, tell tell a little bit about uh, you because uh, I I don't know anything. I just uh, <laughs> responded I, three times on an on an, on an email and, <laughs> and so yeah so. yeah absolutely. I I am actually um, a filmmaker myself. Mm-hmm. I got interested in. <laughs> Wanted to become a director back in 1992. No problem. Sorry. No problem. <laughs> okay. When, okay. Jura- when Jurassic Park came out, huge Spielberg fan, um, made a few shorts in university, and then I've made uh, four feature documentaries, got some other projects <laughs> going on. Uh, I actually, the way this podcast started, and I've said this a few times to people I've spoken to, is that in the mid night mid to late 90s when dreamworks studio was formed yes. uh, i i was just fooling around and i made a website for my school project and it just kind of got me interested and it became really really big like I, for 10 years i had like this is before social media about like 100,000 <laughs> hits wow. per month and and then in covid i started this podcast kind of like going back to dreamworks projects but then i realized that a, there was this very limited number of projects that DreamWorks yes. had made. So then it just kind of expanded to everything. So I just kind of bring my element of storytelling that I have learned and I'm learning still every day, uh, whether it's in narrative uh, feature documentaries or pr- projects that I'm working on and just talking to you know people like yourself, cinematographers, mm-hmm. filmmakers, editors, and just having a fun conversation. That That's mm-hmm. it. That's it's it. all about <laughs> That's it. It's just it, I, you know, we all love t- talking about movies. So, yeah, uh, that's that's the little context just to give you. But I appreciate you asking me. So, um, are you now in LA? No, I'm in Toronto. <laughs> oh, I'm Toronto. In Toronto. You live there. Canada. Yes, I live there. But I do travel for work quite of a bit. Of course. Yeah. yeah, I'm. I was actually in Amsterdam doing. There was a scene that we were filming for one of my documentaries, and one of the films got uh, shown at Utrecht, and at at a, at a movie theater it was like a very kind of like mom and pops movie theater. I forget the name. Yeah. So that's how I sort of started going to Amsterdam, and then I kind of kept going after that. But uh, yeah. but yeah, it's been good. It's, been good. It's, it's a great city. We 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 are here. Um, um, we are here, one and a half months, two months around Christmas. For the cold temperature, and then two months in spring time, and the rest of the time uh, we are in Brazil. Uh, my okay. my my partner is a Brazilian, and uh, she's a writer and she's an artist, and um, uh, so we, we 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 travel between. Uh, and when I work, I work where I have to work. People think uh, I work for Hollywood, yes, but I'm never I never shoot in Hollywood. I mean, um, yeah. probably the last fifteen years I haven't shot anything in Hollywood. Maybe one episode for a friend producer to replace the dp and help him get the get good result that's all i did in fact and every film was different and still the last uh the last three films i did were uh was in canada and north canada and and then one in uh, serbia and the last one in the, the dominican republic and i'm leaving now in a, in uh, less than a month i leave for uh for um, italy 
uh, doing mm. a film, a Netflix film with Mark Waters, which we have done a lot of pro projects. Um, and it's, it's, I do now, I choose my project a little bit more on, uh, on uh, comfort. Uh, I have mm. done enough. I mean, I, I did probably, I did 70, probably 70 films, 70 feature films. Yeah. And then uh, uh, 35 uh, episodes and, 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 and mostly, mostly, um, mostly pilots. Because the pilots, you you have to do something new. That's that's the that's what yeah. you want to do. So uh, uh, I'm 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 uh, I'm done. I mean, not done in the sense because the moment the camera rolls, I'm of course full of passion. <laughs> but uh, yeah. I'm, I'm uh, it's 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 becoming a little bit more uh, nowadays when you work whatever you work uh, with a big studio with a TV uh, studio. It's 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 more and more it becomes. That they asked me to copy things that were successful, yeah. and then I always tell them it's much easier for me to be, to be original than to copy because what you show me is probably a film of uh, three times or four times our budget, and it's probably an actor that you cannot afford, and it's probably with a scene, this music that uh, we don't have yet. So uh, you show me something that you're excited about that we have to make uh, from scratch. And if we copy from scratch, it's much more work and much more, it's, it's much more work. And, and it's, it's not the way you, you do films. You do films, um, you, you create a world. That's, that's, and when you say, when you, when you say, hey, Blade was some, something totally different, it's because in all elements, and that I have to um, tell, uh, tell you that Steve Norrington was really very, uh, very, very strong in that. He was, he's, 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 he's genius in, Filmmaking, not in social uh, social connection, but but that's another story. Uh, yeah. In film, uh, filmmaking and in creating a world that that makes sense, and and in in, in, in this about two two stories. In fact, the stories of what's happening with the vampires, uh, the 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 new Turks in the vampire world, and the old established uh, classic um, uh, vampires. Uh, so so. Uh, Everything has is, is grounded, and you see, of course, uh, when he has his sword and he does this 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 movement, that's unusual. But after three times, you know the deal, and that's that's the and then you play with the cards that are you given, and the the, the game and the and the rules that you you have been given by by the filmmaker himself, and 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 especially in Blades for me. It was a uh, very close collaboration with Steve because Steve, it was Steve's his uh, his first feature film. He had done no, it's not true. It was his second feature film, and his first feature film was a very very low budget film. But it was also the reason that I did it because it was really genius it had done for a lot of visual effects. Uh, and and uh, and I thought, hey, this is a very talented person, and it was and, I, and it wasn't wrong. But um, it was not easy to work with him. But um, <laughs> yeah, no, it it, 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 I, it, it, I enjoyed it. it. Was more not it was not so much for me difficult to work with, but for uh, him and the crew because he uh, exploited the power that was given to him as a director in Hollywood uh, for a film that was ten times more budget than the little film he had done. So um, uh, he he suddenly felt like. Uh, a director, uh, what you are as a director, you're your god for the few days that you uh, have the power, and then you have to solve all the problems that you that you have created when you were god. You know, <laughs> it is, it, it's a different story for me. For me, I come in in a film. I come in a film when the fighting stops. A year fighting about the script, about the budget, about the the actors, about whatever, 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 and then finally, or we're gonna shoot, and then I come in. So I come in on the on the on the on the on the time the decisions that are made with with difficulties uh they are dreams in this in the sky and i have to put them back on earth so it's a it's a very very nice job and when we're done the last shooting day the red party then the fighting starts again how do we put this shit together <laughs> and make it something <laughs> make something sensible out of it now also there i come, I come in with the director to create that and i that's why I come from such a long um, period of filmmaking. We create our film 
beforehand. I mean, I did eight films without a video assist. So the director never saw the shot. So he would ask them, how, how was it? And I would say, oh boy, it was good, it was good. very good. Or I would say, you know what, let's do one more. Maybe things fall better in place. And not that um, my camera movement wasn't good, but the combination of all the things, the rhythm that we had thought about didn't fall in place. So let's try once more as good as we can. And then boom, it, uh, it worked or it didn't work. And then we, we move on. But it was a, a totally different, uh, a totally different uh, um, relation with the director at that time. And now it's, of course, in the, uh, now it has become digital. And, and I have done 50 features, film to film, in the cinema. So um, I, I have transferred what I know about filmmaking to uh, the digital world. So I figure out before I shoot what I'm doing. And that's, uh, of course, uh, uh, a, a much better uh, uh, way to create a consistency in the story. The consistency now has many more possibilities because working on the set, you're freer and you can, um, you can um, react much faster with the te new technology as light and camera and all these elements that you have as a cinematographer, but also in other, other, other levels that you can react better on all the things that are that are appearing on the set to to tell the story and to create that world. But that well world has to be created. It's not like, hey, let's make a picture and oh shit, that's beautiful. You know? No, no, it's that uh, you make the picture, but that's that has nothing to do with what you have already in your mind. And uh, and that's that's the image, that's the world that you create. So so um uh, in Blade specifically, I'm very proud of of uh, having of having created with uh with um, Steve and with the, the crew as well. I mean, the art directing, the, the wardrobe, the visual effects even later and also, and, and, and light as well. And we did a lot of tests to create that, uh, to, 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 to put all the things together. Yeah, and, and, and it shows, one thing you mentioned, which is kind of, it happens in a lot of movies, like, you know, when, with sci-fi or, fantasy is that you have to create a world where people can believe in and because yeah. if you if you do not do that as the script progresses whether it's in dialogue whether it's in um cinematography sets or you know costumes makeup no matter how strong the story is if that doesn't connect then it doesn't work and one of the no. things in blade that was so beautiful so i again i'm not a superhero fan i i, I remember when um I remember I used to know somebody in high school. Um, they were huge fans of like vampire movies, like Interview with Vampire, yeah. Dracula, and all that stuff. I was never into those kind of movies either. But the great thing about this film was when I was watching it about you know 13 years ago, and then I saw it again yesterday, uh, is that it just explains everything clearly to the point without going over the top, without mm -hmm. being limited, and that and even the opening, like. You know, that opening, what was it, like maybe a minute and a half long? Like that just said so much yeah. in just that minute and a half. Again, it's yeah. execution of story. And, 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 and that's, again, the word grounded is just so cool that mm. you have, you just feel that you're there, like you're taken on a journey. And the problem with a lot of films nowadays or even sequels from movies back in the 90s is that you always want to go bigger and better, right? Mm -hmm. When you go bigger and better, then your budget goes up, your visual effects goes up, and the story becomes a secondary thing, and then it just suffers. Unless you have this, uh, you have these directors and uh, who, who who can and with the DP and with uh, with with our director and, and with the actors, if if he can keep that all, even if the bu the budget is uh, three hundred million, if he can keep that 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 intimate uh, goal of telling the story. Um, then it's the same for me. It's uh, when when I was uh, in Europe and there was a chance that I was invited to do a film in in, in the States and um, and my crew after a film that we just finished the rap party we were drinking and I said, "Hey, what is your next film?" I said, no, I don't know. I don't know. I uh, I need to hear in Holland. I have to invent invent every time the wheel again. The last film. So I'm looking maybe a little further. So I ah, go to Hollywood. Said no, no, but you're never gonna listen. If Frank Frank 
Francis Scott Coppola calls me tomorrow, if I can the day after start a film, then I can do that with you guys. That you have you have no idea. I, I can do yeah. that. There's no difference. It's just a scale difference. It's a bigger yeah. lamp, it's a bigger crew, it's a bigger you just have to keep focus on the little things that the story is. It's the same hundred pages typed with the same computer, with the same paper printed, and that's the dream. And we we get we get what we get. That's the set uh, offered. We decide a little bit, and Hollywood's for sure not. I mean, you you come in because you're one of the most expensive guys. So you don't come in uh, five weeks before, six weeks before, or ten, ten weeks before. Only the higher, the, the big big films. Uh, of course, you need to be there for the visual effects for all the other stuff. But um, but in in if you if you are um, uh, shit, I lost my. Uh, uh, I lost my uh, just working working on like a, a bigger films basically like yeah know. yeah but see it's, it's it's a skill difference that's that's where it's come where and, it comes to to make to make that uh to get, stay focused on that on that creating of the other worlds and that's uh that's one of the most important things and me for me i'm and, and there might be more the movies that come to my mind where the sequels were equally good were personally for me obviously the godfather one and two <laughs> Um, you know, a lot of people don't like the third one. I thought it was a very good closure in terms of the how the movie ended. And Indiana Jones one, two, and three, and mm -hmm. anything, anything, even the most in recent Indiana Jones. I mean, they just went for bigger visual effects and all that stuff, and they didn't. I wasn't too crazy about it. It was an okay mm -hmm. film. Like I, I, I don't know if you have seen it. Uh, no, I. <laughs> Yeah, I I I, la I probably li like the last act, which I thought could have been explored more. But anyways, so that's that's the thing. It's very rare, but even with the Matrix films. The first Matrix was so grounded, and then the second and third went crazy because with the visual nah. effects. Right. Good, good example. Good example. The Matrix was made two years after us. Looks. I was gonna say that it looks. A lot years. Similar. The yeah. the editor, a very very good friend, uh, lost a little bit of contact because I'm so far away. A um, little bit of contact with him. He got the Oscar for the editing, uh, um, and um, um, uh, we were talking about the film a lot. Um, uh, when I saw the Matrix, I started to talk about about the film and about how I liked it so much. And the bullet time camera, the bullet time shooting. I wanted to have that for the fight, the sword fight, but it wasn't developed yet. They had done done only two little things: one um, commercial, one commercial, and one little, uh, little. And they were they didn't want to do it because they 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 thought uh, it's not they were not ready yet. I said, no, yeah. come on, let's let's do it. I have some money, but uh, luckily I didn't do it because it, uh, in the matrix it cost them five million dollars to, uh, to at the end to uh, to to get it all right. But the whole sword fight, where uh, the the blood uh, the blood gods uh, fight uh, uh, Stephen Dark, the blood becomes the blood gods. I mean, the whole story the, yeah. that uh, that was all digital, and a uh, digital company went bankrupt. And then um, six, seven, eight months later, we have to reshoot it, and uh, we have to build the whole the whole uh, temple again, the under under Earth temple for the for the sword fight. We build it bigger because we want to have more action uh, angles. And then we did, redid that all, uh, so it's uh, it's uh, it, it's it's really um, really very interesting to see how uh, how how the Matrix has looked a lot at us. If you analyze it, and if you see this, the, the 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 quality of light at uh, Cyan, that was very it was similar. New. Yeah, well, it was new in that time. They did it already yeah. a little bit in the commercials, but they did not do it at all. So I wanted to have a real other look in uh, in uh, specifically in the start. With the with the blood scene, uh, that's like a complete complicated uh, way of lighting. We wanted to have the blood. Uh, I saw the blood as a, as a separate character, especially on the end, because in the script it was the blood god uh, is, is in this big fight, and so from the beginning you see blood. It needs to get to you, and that's why uh, in the first scene I I uh, think the camera up with strobes. So that that means that you. Exposure takes place during a flash of the stroke when the shutter is open. That means mm. you exposure is very short, and when exposure is very short, your image is very sharp. So the the movement is not a movement that's created by the blur of the motion, because if you do twenty five 
uh, fifties of a second and you move fast, then everything is blurred. And the blur, your brain makes that to a movement. But if you don't do that and you give it the flashes and the blood, the blood, uh, uh, the blood drops are uh, not uh, not soft, but they are really sharp. It becomes um, uh, particulated. You understand? It becomes like parts. It becomes uh, aggressive, and <clears throat> that's how we did the first uh, the first scene. But I created also an, uh, because it's a party. So we went from when you come into this party is really an and a, a, a real good vibe in the, in the, it was nothing we created completely that that uh, and and also i used the lights uh, in in the bed coming into the camera seven xenon lights it, it were moved by people uh, to create this wild uh, element so um, and we did a lot of handheld of course and local lens and everything everything what's necessary to create create that sexy vibe but um uh, the moments it stops and the blood starts uh, coming down. That moment is um, very, very important because that moment, the other, um, um, the other strobe starts with the cameras and they are lighting the the drops and the other uh, other, other light. Uh, I let still go in the in the strobe, but when the strobe is not there, uh, the strobe that we have installed in the in the in the in the scene is not there to light the blood. The blood is suddenly sharp. And and mm. uh, and and that the and that creates that uh, that that harshness of the blood. But when you sh you have the when you have um, 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 uh, Wesley on one side when the group opens, and then the the other side and the other side is only lit with this uh, strobe light from the blood. The, the, the blood is like alive. It's like alive. And uh, it, and it is. And, yeah. So, it is, and I, I'll tell you, I'll tell you a funny story. Yesterday, and I was watching it again. Yeah. I was flying, I was flying from um, San Francisco to Toronto, and I was mm -hmm. watching it on my on my iPad. And that scene came up, and you know, when you're watching in a crowd, like when something like violent or <laughs> comes up, you're like, okay, what, 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 are people looking over? And it was, I felt so awkward watching it because it was so real and authentic, like all the yeah. the whole blood. That actually, the guy next to me, his head kind of turned over, and he's like, "Which movie is this?" And I'm like, "Blade." He's like, "Oh, it looks cool," and that was it. And <laughs> yeah. This movie. But that—that's the kind of impact that scene was. Like the fact that you're sitting in public and you're feeling awkward. Like, what the hell are you watching? Like all these people and <laughs> soaked, soaked in, soaked in blood. You know, yeah. you talked about working with Stephen uh, Norrington. If, if it's totally up to you, you brought it up, so I would leave it up to you. Obviously, the film that he created was wonderful. Like you know, mm -hmm. and sometimes, sometimes, not all the time. Sometimes, some individuals they do great work, but they may not be great in terms of social, you know, connection yeah, with other course. people. Of course. What 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 kind of problems or disagreements you guys went through on the set? An example or two, if you're willing to I, share. It. I did not have any disagreements. You did. Okay. No, no, we are not. But I walked away from the set, and I tell you why. Because um, uh, my crew, it would be nasty to the gaffer, for example, for no reason, just to 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 show his power. And I I said something, hey, come, don't do that. I mean, um, and at a certain moment, he uh, he really um, went too far. And I said, hey, uh, I'm I'm uh, that's not it's not it's not cool. I I wanted to stop because uh, you you exploit. The situation that you are the director and and uh, and so on and then he said who, who are you who are you um uh you you hold up your meter and you say to your assistant 4.5 and he said to stop and then he shoots i was i was surprised by by such a reaction i said and who are you you say action and cut so and i walked away and uh and uh and i i walked away i i i really Thought that's it, and then walked away, and then I called my uh, my wife and called my agent, and said, "Hey, um, I'm off the film. I'm gonna go and whatever." And, oh, you're gonna do that? You're gonna be sued? And uh, I don't give a shit. I go back to Amsterdam. That's it. I cannot cannot. I go for this guy to to fire and water if that's necessary to make the story well. So um, uh, to be like that, uh, uh, I cannot work like that. It has to do with the film. Nothing to do with the story. We're yeah, yeah, yeah. very, very good together. Only just a human thing. 
And um, and uh, my good friend producer called me. He said, "Hey, I said, hey, tell, do you want to talk about it with not, with uh, Steve?" He said, "Absolutely, no problem. I can talk, but on one condition, because the union was already there, um, and 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 the, and the studio also. I mean, New Line was there, and uh, I said, oh, one condition, one representative of the studio, one representative of the studio." Of the studio and one percent of the union is there while well, I have this discussion, and we discussed. And uh, I said, "Hey, Steve, I told you you cannot do that." I said, "Oh, I wasn't aware of that. That I was constant <laughs> doing this." I said, hey, "Come on, you're a very smart guy. <laughs> don't don't uh, look, look. He was thirty three. I was. Uh, I had done done already forty features, and I just so I, I I'm not somebody who, who who wants to do him harm or something. I I." Uh, work as hard as possible to get that fantastic idea that is already because of his social, um, um, uh, uh, I say that his social uh, um, missing. Yeah, his, his, he didn't have social capacities, and and uh, so so um, I said to him, uh, look, I, if if that wasn't the case, then I would continue. And I said, but tell if I promise not to do it anymore. And and suddenly I, I uh, and because he said really I don't realize that I was uh, abusing people. And I said, yeah, you were, you were, you're, you're smart enough. Uh, but uh, um, I, I come back, no problem. Um, um, but on one condition, if it happens again, I'm gone. But but if I don't know when it happens, how can I? Um, uh, how do I know? It's smart. Eh? <laughs> I said to him, very simple. I will tell you, and I will go. <laughs> so it is not that difficult. Um, and so we, uh, we 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 I walked away. And so we we had this conversation, and the union said, okay, we continue. You lost half a day, and he walked out of of the out of the office. And who's there? Wesley comes. Uh, Passes me, <laughs> perfect. And I, I, I went to, to a uh, very classic setting to the, um, um, uh, to the because there were everybody twenty six departments had walked away. Twenty six, sorry, twenty six people from different departments walked away. Wow, had walked away. And so, and they, they said uh, everybody. And so I said I have to talk to everybody. So I went to a, a truck. The, the the loads uh, and I stand on the truck like an like a union uh, union guy uh, talking and trying to get his crew together and I said listen this is not between you and uh, and uh, Wesley no but he he's awful in that sense and uh, okay it's gonna change I've talked to him and um, uh, but but you go you stay on and he, I see what's gonna happen okay but that's nothing to do with, with my relation with him I walked away and so that's no no you're we're gonna go as well so um we uh, uh we, we 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 stopped this and we uh, we started the next day uh, again uh, continue and we, we and sped up sped up a little bit and, uh, and 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 he never he never was like that anymore because in fact you know, like a Brit, uh, very good humor, a, a little, little, little dry. And sometimes he drifted away to a little bit of exploiting the, the uh, talking down on people. And then I said, oh, oh okay, okay. <laughs> and then he would, uh, would continue. It was funny, in fact. It was very funny, but this, uh, uh, wow. but in, in a bad way. So most and of the time. How how far into production did this happen? This happened. Uh, I think four, three weeks, four weeks. It ha there were already a lot of situations that we thought, wait, it cannot go on like that. And this was just a uh, tensile situation in, in the big set. Uh, and uh, and uh, uh, so so it, after, it was after a while because uh, there were quite quite some incidents had happened already. It, it is so interesting. Um... Almost so many films, not all, you know, even films like Aliens, the James Cameron version, the, there was a big, big revolt against James Cameron and Sigourney Weaver kind of came in between. All these films that would go through hell, whether it's on set or post-production or budget, most of them come up on a very good end. Like, I don't know, I don't know how Blade did at the box office, but it became such a cult classic. Um, I, I was never fan of Wesley Snipes. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm sure he's a, but that role 
was just perfect for him. Like he yeah. fitted into that role as you would wear a glove on your hand. Yeah, it, it was it, also, it, yeah, yeah. He created that glove as well. He was producer as well. Yeah, I, um, I, but but still, just to be in that yeah. character, like he was really good at it. He was really yeah. good. Um, Absolutely. There is uh, what aside from all that set stuff, like you know the the social yeah. element. What was the most fun day and the most difficult day on the set, and why? Was it filming a specific scene? Or so many just... scenes. I mean, uh, I know, I know, I know. So many scenes. So many. Uh, I mean, we had three thousand can... shots or something like that in the film. It's like insane. I did once a film of ninety shots, and there was three thousand. So, well, which scenes? Oh yeah, I I like the scenes when um um uh, what's her name Bush uh the 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 count of the the female lead yeah. um yeah. when she is going through um his his uh, layer. Uh, and and finds um, uh, uh, just until the moment she's discovered by Chris Christopherson, uh, when she sees and hears and and looks at uh, who he is, in fact, also uh, because that was totally the opposite as the action scenes, and I had a separate camera for that and separate lenses, not camera. The camera was static and 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 very slow movement, or very very slow and very static. To create that uh, that quietness of Blade in in his world, and um, and then of course the action scenes uh, are amazing. The 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 we had very good stunt stunt coordination, and I had uh, it was a payback because just before the film started, I wanted to have coming closer to the to the shooting. I saw how how good the action uh, rehearsals were. I, I was there and I thought, shit, I I. I uh, the, we have I have fought for anamorphic and now have, we have anamorphic, but there is it it is not flexible enough to be as flexible as we need for this film. So I need to figure out something. So I um, I had worked as a movie camera, a brand, brand new camera, brand new camera, and I uh, the new movie cam was a mini movie cam, and but that had no the the animal fight for the viewfinder. Mm. But I knew the, I knew and and I went to visit um, visit. Uh, Panavision, what was about 300 meters from uh, from three, 300 yards from where we were shooting, and I had done films with uh, Panavision, and and they said, oh, you you, because I wanted to have a, a steady cam handheld on the same the same way uh, that they could use a steady cam and handheld for the harsher work, uh, but they did not have lenses that fitted, and I, if I would need the lens that I use for handheld on the steady cam, it needed to to be an other lens. And I need a little bit of a lens, a complete other lens. And I said, I, I gotta do it. I, I so I came up with the idea to uh, gave, to to call Gabriel Bauer in uh, in Austria. He was in that time still independent uh, uh, um, uh, movie cam because it was uh, now it's it's bought by Aeroflex. It was a big competition because mm -hmm. uh, movie cam camera was a better camera already from the from, from the get go. And uh, Gabriel Bauer was uh, not yet bought up by Ariflex. So uh, I called him and said, hey, there is a monopoly of anamorphic in, in, in the whole United States. And that's Panavision. You cannot really do in a good way another anamorphic film if you don't deal with Panavision. So if you can give me two the animal fighters for the, for the mini movie cam before mm -hmm. in two weeks, then I will change my equipment and I uh, um, I will shoot with uh, with the movie cam and and this uh, with uh, and then you have a foot in the door in 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 the states. Two before the two weeks were over, I had two DNA fighters created for the camera. So I had a, 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 a handheld camera, a sound camera that was as big as a sixty millimeter camera because the Claremont had very little very little anamorphic lenses, very special. A little distorting, but that's exactly what he wanted for the action scenes. And then the the wider scenes, the the, the quiet scenes, the story of Blade outside the fighting and outside, and the story of her outside, very quiet and very steady and very very big and and not distorted and and, and not with the uh, anamorphic. I was working on not to get the anamorphic effects. Well, everybody's working now to get the anamorphic <laughs> mistakes. I have worked 40 years to get the lenses better. And now, 
oh, oh, because I I tested all the lenses for this film because they didn't want to shoot New Line didn't want to shoot it anymore. I had to defend it and 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 yeah. and, and explain it why. And now I had so I had to find a solution for this camera, and so I had this unbelievable practical cameras for this for the for the for the fight scenes and then the the the, the wider with the iris scope the Siri lenses anamorphic iris scope lenses are unbelievable they don't have any distortion don't have any of these mistakes of the anamorphic um and there's no anamorphic uh uh arty shit it is just a very strong lens but that's why nobody uses it because when they shoot anamorphic they want to have that an unperf uh, not perfect idea while well, i was working on the opposite and do with light my stuff so it's a it's a whole different uh approach of how you make image it's a it's very funny to go yeah. through that whole process no i'm i'm a huge fan of anamorphic and uh it's a and it's uh, something that I noticed, obviously, I mean, I, when I was watching on the plane, because I have an anamorphic monitor, and I was like, I wish I was watching this on an anamorphic monitor. But yeah. uh, it's one thing that you mentioned about, which was so, so good, and I noticed it. You know, in every movie that you make, especially action or thriller or sci-fi, even in a drama, you know, there is there is uh, action sequence or there is a moment of climax, and then there is calm moment. Like, you have to kind of go like, this like you have to bring the audience mm -hmm. to calm to make them rest and then go up again to a next scene like whatever the you know the plot takes you and come back but one thing that movies nowadays with some exception exception of some when those scenes that are calm and just timid that your audience needs to sort of just rely and rest and focus on the story sometimes they're shot in such a way where either the, the shots are too tight, like, you know, just over the shoulders, yeah. you don't, you don't see the environment, like a TV kind of approach or, or they're very, the camera is moving around a lot. But mm -hmm. what I loved about what you just said, and, and I noticed that is that in all those scenes where there was no action sequence and where you were trying to learn about who Blade is, it was just so calm. It was mm -hmm. just so calm. And that yeah. works so well in contrast to the, fast-paced action sequences that you have yeah 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 absolutely and there it was uh, working together with the art department and and steve is very uh, sensitive for that um visual uh, the, the film is visually very strong very strong in 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 in, in breathing in uh, in and out breathing of your story from your action and then uh, calming down and then and on all levels it calms down in 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 framing in light in in everything and then when we when we go berserk uh, when when we are in the in the in the um, um, top level of the building of dorf which he, where he mm. has his party where he kills uh, uh, one of the guys uh, the policeman he bites him and uh, and this whole weird situation uh, that has movement and it has uh, uh, it's the camera's a little off but the moment we have his blades in his interior, and the camera's not off, the camera is just observing and learning, and uh, and and yeah, we, we could do, uh, we could uh, could very could go very fast because everything is built. Huh? The whole thing is no, not really. The only thing that was for most of the uh, for the biggest part of, in the location was uh, Chris Kristofferson layer, the big factory. It's unbelievable. It was yeah. uh, unbelievable in the middle of uh, LA somewhere. Insane. Yeah, it was it was really cool on the camera, like yeah. visually. I mean, just being in that space. Yeah, and that's and that's another thing, right? Like with superhero movies or sci-fi movies, sometimes directors or even the the script goes really high end on the environments, but you know. Yeah. Spielberg is really good at not doing that. And Blade was another one of those films where you you have that advancement, but there has to be a contrast to the reality that people are living in right exactly. now to, to yeah. connect them. Yeah. 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 And then uh, also, uh, because my experience, of course, coming from a low budget uh, world in, in Holland uh, up till uh, starting to do bigger films in, in the United States, um, uh, let's say, um, the film that I did as my first film, I don't know if, if you ever saw that, really the, wait a little bit until my restored uh, um, five, uh, sorry, uh, uh, 4K 
Blu-ray comes out because it's amazing. It's a uh, uh, Miracle Mile. It's my first film that I did. In, okay. In, it's a fantastic film. Fantastic film. And very little money. Three million, three and a half million dollars with a lot of visual effects. End of the world uh, plays there and, uh, and, uh, and, 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 and it's locked in time. So on a certain moment, every shot it becomes a little lighter in the morning. It's a very difficult film to make, but I'm very proud of it. And especially we have restored it. And I'm, I'm going to now, uh, next week, I'm starting to restore because the Criterion Collection called me if I could supervise my second film in the United States, Crossing the Lenti, with Amy Irving. So wow. next week, I start. I said, I can do it, but I'm not in uh, in L.A. So, uh, oh, we we can do it in New York. So now I'm also not in New York. So, so but we sometimes do it in... I... I uh, I, I said, okay, if we find a place where I can, uh, where, where I am, can we, for example, do it in Amsterdam? And I had just experience of uh, doing a remote control timing in Amsterdam for my film in Serbia a year ago. Uh, so I had a very good post house. I have a very good post house. For, for me, it's not a problem, the guy said. Uh, I just come to Amsterdam and, and you do your job there. We send up the tapes and the data, and uh, and uh, and you do uh, you do your job there. He understood, and uh, so I, I'm doing it here. Three minutes from my uh, here on, the, on my bike to the post production house, and uh, <laughs> and I, nice. I, I retime uh, Amy Irving in uh, Crossing the Lancy. So, so I'm doing more first, film. Yeah, that. So what, what's your first film called? I'm just going through IMDb right now. Um, Mir Mir Miracle Mile. Miracle Mile. And, and then you're. Anthony second Edwards film? and uh, oh sorry, uh, Miracle Mile is the first one. The second is uh, Crossing the Lancy. That means the Lancy Street, Crossing the Lancy Street. It's Crossing. a very sweet film, and and Miracle Mile is an absurd uh, story. It's uh, it's very very good film. It's, uh, when it was uh, when I came to uh, the states, my my last film in Holland got an Oscar for best foreign film. So I was invited to do a film. In, in the States, and when I came there, um, uh, Miracle Mile was one of the 10 most famous scripts going around in Hollywood that wasn't made yet. And uh, if you see the film, you understand why, because it doesn't have a happy end. <laughs> oh, sorry, <laughs> I, I spill it now a little bit. Um, That's fine. I, I was just reading the premise. I mean, it sounds... Quite interesting, and uh, something you. It sounds. It before. sounds not for three million dollars. That's for sure. Yeah. And then, and then, um, uh, four years later, I did exactly the same piece, Miracle Mile, for Volcano, but we shot somewhere else, and we built the whole street. We built a set for 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 um, five million dollars, and the film Miracle Mile itself was only three million dollars, three and a half million dollars. The whole film, with all the visual effects and all the stuff. And 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 the hundred million dollar volcano had exactly the same piece, but had of course more uh, more stuff to do. Uh, a volcano in the middle of LA. So uh, so so you see the difference. Uh, and while I was doing, and you will like that, while I was doing the volcano, uh, in the weekends I was shooting with my ex partner now uh, a documentary that got the Oscar nomination. A documentary all alone with her and a stuntman in. In downtown, in, in the Lower East Side, dangerous area, with my old Atom camera. And while well, during the week, I was doing uh, the $100 million volcano film. So oh, wow. somewhere in between is my, uh, my uh, it doesn't matter to me. This is the, I, I'm doing, uh, I, uh, I enjoy it. I, I enjoy what, all the different, all the different, uh, um, different style, genres and styles. I, I'm quickly bored, so I don't. I I, I don't want to be typecast. As what you as yeah. a DP, you become typecast as well in 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 LA in Hollywood. If you do action, I think, you you, yeah. push, you you have to be you have to do action. While well, my resume is all over the place, so that's also why I am uh, not uh, so called. Uh, what's happening with him? He does all different films. Yeah, because I like it. <laughs> Very yeah. simple. I mean, it's very easy in uh, even in Hollywood or even in outside of Hollywood. Like when you do one job or even like one type of film, you become you kind of get attracted to the similar stories. But yeah, but it's it's so important to have diversify yourself because for your own 
sanity, for your own growth, and you know, for creative juices flowing in different directions. You know, one thing I I want to sort of talk about uh, as we kind of come close to it, the film. There's, as you know, another Blade movie being made, or it's already yeah. completed at least. Um, was that something that ever came to you? Uh, no, or no. even consultation wise or anything or no. It's very even worse. Um, the the Blu-ray that I supervised and the transfer that I supervised got uh, enormous uh, uh, good uh, reviews, especially mm. the, the 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 Blu-ray, uh, because I shot by shot I have brought it back to the original and even better. I mean, uh, without losing any filmic quality. And, and the in two years ago, one half years ago, Warner Brothers. I discovered that makes a 4K Blu-ray of a 4K version of the film. And I would have done, of course, for nothing. And I'm very fascinated, I'm very fast in timing because I, my image, my, my, it's not like that I start discovering in the timing what they have done. I am coming from film where I had to, where I never could change. So it was always done. So, um, um, I had done. I would have done it for for nothing, for just supervising to get the same quality that of even better quality if they wanted. But the 4K. I hope you didn't see the 4K. Uh, you probably not uh, 4K version of Blade, one, because that's completely overblown with HDR and that's typical. Uh, yeah. Yes. Very pity. Big pity. Big pity. I I didn't see 4K because I would have been able I love to. You tell because it's it's yeah one that's my thing with 4k too i mean it's it's good in some cases but sometimes it becomes so sharp in some cases that you just don't feel yeah, but it's, it's, no but that's that's not uh that's not the problem so much it's not that's more um how you uh process it. I, 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 yeah not even process it how you how you uh how you light it and how you approach it mm. and uh, from the, from the get-go i mean i do already since 2005 2008 I have never done any film anymore because I didn't want to get romantic about film. I wanted to help the digital, uh, the digital, because the digital was clearly going to pass in quality yeah. the film. And uh, and if that's the case or not the case, you can talk to Chris Nolan. But um, 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 it is the case, and he he as well will uh, does affect already because. There's no theater in who shows film. So what yeah. you see and Chris or oh, shot on film, yeah. But this film is only data. It's just it's not that he wants to shoot like that because it's film. Because film is on the set more precious. So you do one shot, and uh, that's a take, and that take is from action to cut. In 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 video you don't you say a reset and everybody goes back to the beginning while you keep rolling and an operator after five six times has not the same energy the same the same focusing as the first day so it it, it, it it's it's the end it's the energy is the discipline of film that makes film in, more interesting but i do yeah. that on, i do it on digital I, I use my same my same tools as I do on uh, on, on on film, and but on the on the spot I can be in, very intuitive because all the things I can change just during the shot cells and and I, I can just leave the outside three stops underexposed and and move in and and change it on the on the spot three cameras I do it myself so it's a very has become very intuitive, but still you need to. Set the limits for what you want to show already before you make the image, and that's the, that's the 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 big the big um, the big uh, secret of uh, of of filmmaking of being a cinematographer. If you look at mm. all, all the good cinematographers, uh, um, um, the are, are around now, the good ones, they all are uh, very uh, they they radiate confidence. Uh, in their image because they have already yeah. processed the image before they push the button and uh, the the filming itself is just uh, of course they use the the tools to play with it up to the moment it comes into the in, into the camera but uh, they they uh, they know what they're doing and they're not it's not like uh, hey oh that looks good <laughs> the, the whoa that looks good uh, style 
Yeah. Are you are you going to see the new blade, or you're just gonna pass, or you don't know? I think I I will see it if I see it. I probably see it on the. Uh, I'm I'm not. I, I, yeah. I don't know. It depends who who, who was doing it because it, it's uh, it was delayed and it was something. Uh, yeah, I I don't know if it was COVID or if it was something else. It was else, COVID. But, yeah. Yeah. And I don't know. I don't know if they pick it up. At least Wesley is not doing it. Yeah, right. Mahesh Lali is doing it. Yeah, um, so, so but... I'm not going to go to Blade then. I go to another film that is it's <laughs> called Blade. Because Wesley is Blade. There's no doubt about yeah. it. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Everything in that film, everything in the film comes from that character. That's why it became an, an icon for every superhero film that follows. For uh, other films as well. I mean, uh, Spider-Man, uh, the Fantastic Four, the whatever it's called, the X Men, all started Matrix, all all after this. This yeah. is absolutely a fact, but I did not know when I shot it. I heard that only when I was asked in two thousand eight, maybe two thousand nine, that somebody um, uh, mentioned it uh, that uh, Marvel uh, was uh, was in fact bankrupt when uh, when um, Blade came out. And Blade was the first real hero, uh, Superman, sorry, hero, superhero movie. Yeah. And for sure, the first black superhero movie. Um, so so um, uh, that I didn't know, that we were so so strong. I felt that when we were doing it, that we did the right thing and, and that we made the right choices and the result was fabulous. And then when... when, when uh, uh, Steve started to. Steve is, yeah, has not at all uh, been involved. He thought it was archaic, the color the color correction of film, because he had done uh, uh, video, I think, and he hadn't done. He didn't want to sit uh, for two hours in the cinema to say, "Oh, a little bit more blue, a little bit more red." So, so um, after one time, he said, "You do it." And I had already, um, out of the experience of. Volcano, what was a big visual effects film, and where the visual effects were digital, and the film was film, but the digital, the visual effects were made independently of the quality of my film, and my film I couldn't change. I couldn't say, okay, uh, the the sky, the 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 by night, the sky of this shot is a little less blue. No, it was all. So what did the visual effects department do? They changed my image, part of the image that was uh, where the digital effect had to fit in. They changed my image into so so that their effects better matched. But mm -hmm. I could not change the that what they had changed. So having learned that in Volcano, that I was stuck with visual effects that were uh, in a world that was changed. Uh, in contra in, in in relation to what I had shot in my world, uh, that I uh, made a whole uh, when 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 um, when uh, Steve left post production said hey Theo you you do it he had a lot of confidence in in what what I was planning to do so every shot that was a, had a visual effect I took the shot a B negative from the shot before and a B negative of the shot afterwards for like like. Uh, Three seconds, and I made a reel of that, like a ten ten a minute reel of all the visual effects and what was before and afterwards. And and I timed that reel as to know what it was going to be, mm. because I wouldn't be able to change that. So, if there was a visual effect for approval uh, offered to us, then I say okay, put that and that. Uh, before and afterwards, and uh, and show it to us. So I never had to say, "Oh, this is fantastic." Oh, this is not at all good. This is the the sky is too red. The thing is, I would I would just say, "And you like it?" And they would say, "Whoa, it looks uh, looks good." They or they would say, "The yeah, the, the shots before and afterwards look a little different." No, 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 no. Your shots look different. So if you think that this is good, you have to go to the audition. Sorry. But that's not the way uh, it can work. So I changed yeah. the control, and that's what I learned uh, from the digital to for the film world to the digital world. That I had to create the control again, and 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 
create the technology of making your image and control it. So, uh, uh, wow. yeah, yeah, that's that's uh, what I do now. I mean, uh, I, I, yeah, I, I, I don't correct on the set. I use, I don't use LUTs. I use a lot of the camera and do it with light, like I did always do. Yeah, and that's the and way do, to do it. Yeah, only when I want to do something special, yeah. I show the director what I'm going to do, or, or, so he sees it. So then he knows what's going to be. And then when it comes out differently, then he knows already. Hey, that's not what we uh, what we wanted. And I make I make stills and I correct the stills and send it to the producer, to the studio, to the writer even if they want to. And they, oh, it looks fantastic. Okay, so if it comes back bad from the post production house, then I show them say, hey, this is what we like. So whatever happens afterwards, I can correct that later. But be aware that this is what it is. And this is what what I'm starting with at the end. Yeah, that's that's, that's awesome. And no, that that's fantastic. Thank you for sharing all that detail. Um, you know, yeah, that, what, know. What you have sort of go go through. No, it's good because I, yeah. you know, the people who listen to the podcast they they want to learn. I always want to learn, and that's that's fantastic. And I mean, one thing I would love to do um, maybe after you're done with your next film. Um, I, I would love to have you on again and talk about your first film and your second film and and you know if that's something of interest I, I would love to chat about that I've, I obviously I have to see it first which I haven't so yeah. I have to see it and the, find the, out my, my first American film but, but there are some very interesting uh, European films I did um, that because I when I got here of course I would go after Miracle Mile Miracle Mile was unique because I just came in and I had it was not an an urban film. It was not. A, it was like a complete new film. It was uh, LA as you never have seen. I was the only one who was shooting LA like that. Everybody was uh, misting it up and uh, and uh, and low contrast filters and and uh, wetting it down the streets. I had thirty days that I had to <laughs> that I had to do have the same quality in the streets and everything else because it was in thirty days I would do uh, let's say three four hundred shots that are, were cut together. And, and as one as one atmosphere, so I, I was, it was a big gamble, and it, I luckily I did not have rain in the, in this time because I did everything dry. It was unique in in LA because everybody created that uh, that uh, James Cameron style of of the, mm. the his first the Terminator, the Terminator, the Terminator. I was, the, yeah, I was gonna say that. Was yeah. doing, everybody was doing the Terminator, <laughs> and I was doing the opposite. It's wide angle and calm and 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 by night in LA, really, really good, really, really. I'm very, uh, very proud of this film, especially now after the 4K. So I'm now interested in restoring. That was because I, most of the films they never called me to do the color correction, and the color correction in the 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 more the digital world developed, the less they needed us in the sense of. Like we can, yeah. you get you get the the color artist. So you get the kind of a. It's about the source, and it's not about the meat anymore. And and, yeah. and you need to. It's not about the meat either alone, but it is the combination of the two that makes the the the, the dinner. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, yeah, hundred and, percent. Yeah, and that's and, and that's uh, every time a fight. So I'm doing it now beforehand and have be seventy percent ready. So if they come in and there's somebody else and I'm not invited or I was doing another film, then um, uh, then I send my uh, tills over and, uh, and, uh, and 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 let them hopefully do it uh, do it like that. But um, yeah. it is a big that that became a big uh, a big problem in the that was a, the hybrid period between film and digital. And everybody says everybody said that they had a solution, but nobody had. So everybody from <laughs> the studio, they they would they would trust the post production houses because what they saw was not that good, and because it wasn't ready yet. It was just in, in, in high definition dailies from uh, from from that somebody had done by by night by night uh, and and had fabricated by night, but had nothing to do with your your vision. Um, yeah. So. So it was it was a frustrating time, but uh, I've I've worked hard to that to uh, to to get over that, and a lot of things uh, um, came from the ASC, the technical committee, who mm -hmm. involved all the associate members. That's a big thing. The associate members were all um, people from 
Warner Brothers, Sony, the, the high tech guys yeah. who are associate members of the AC, very, uh, they were very proud of being that. And, but they had no function than being an associate member until we were just thrown out and, and suddenly didn't get uh, to the control anymore. And so everything uh, started to, we got a technical committee, I have been there for so many evenings and like, 80% I didn't understand a word of what they are saying because it was high level all on, on digital and uh, it was it was very difficult. But I learned that part as much as I could because I knew that they had to deal with it. And, and that's what I did. And so the very few uh, DPs of my age uh, uh, did that. They just uh, hoped that they could do another film. And uh, yeah. for the rest, they would shoot and, and light a monitor on the set. And what happened afterwards, uh, yeah. That's yeah, awesome. Always, That's awesome. Yeah, I, I always try to uh, control that from the, from Blade on. And Blade, I did it very well. Um, yeah. The that that uh, that uh, combination from film and and digital was difficult. Yeah. Well, again, what a great film Blade is, um, and I think it was a way ahead of its time. Uh, mm -hmm. Like I said, I saw it in 2010. And I saw it yesterday, and an amazing film. Not just from the stylistic standpoint, but just you know the story and the grounded. And I. Mm -hmm. Love chatting with love chatting with you, Theo, and I would love to have you on again uh, whenever you okay. are available. It would be an honor talking to you again. So uh, around, I will probably be back in in uh, from Italy, uh, half in May, and then I go first here, half in May. So um, that's fine. From, from from that moment on, it doesn't matter for me where it is because in in in, Br in Brazil I have a very good server and very good internet, so. We can okay. chat like we do now. Sounds good. I, I, okay. I'll look forward to doing that. Thank you so much again for your time, and thank Same. you for making part being not being part an important part of uh, Blade. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye. You. bye bye. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thank you so much for watching and listening. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and comment, and do come back for another episode. Until then, have a great day.